14 centuries before the birth of Jesus, around the year 1350 BC, a small village was developed, Ephrata, later known as Bethlehem. It served as a rest stop for travelers journeying between Egypt and Syria. For centuries, Bethlehem, known only for its agricultural life and the place of rest, lived in relative obscurity in the shadow of the city of God, Jerusalem. And yet this rather obscure village is the birthplace of Israel's greatest earthly king, David. And by God's call, the eventual birthplace of the King of Kings, the Messiah, Jesus. God proclaims through Micah, but you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. As we light the fourth candle on the Advent wreath, we do so celebrating and remembering how God raises up the lowly and obscure. Places like Bethlehem and people like Mary, the mother of Jesus, and people like us to become bearers of God's grace, love, and peace to the world. The ones who refresh and renew our neighbors by what's inside us. And we testify and worship with Mary, saying, my soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. Friends, we're so glad that you are with us this morning. Whether it be here with us or online, we're so grateful that we can be together. And we continue this morning with our worship with the cantata. On a people besieged by confusion, hopelessness, and desperation was to shine the glory of one who had come to comfort the persecuted, to renew the lives of the disheartened, and to uplift the spirits of the downtrodden. Lift up your heads, you mighty gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. We listen attentively to hear the voice of one who proclaims in the wilderness, prepare now the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill made low. The crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh, flesh shall see it together. Oh, oh, oh. 
And so the Advent is heralded and the prophet foretells the promise of everlasting life to God's people. For the Lord said, I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come and I will fill each house with glory. My soul waits for the Lord more than they that wait for the morning. Hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. Even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Gabriel was sent from God to a virgin who was to be married to a man named Joseph. Her name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Hail, you who are highly regarded. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. When Mary saw him, she was startled at what he said and confused by his greeting. But the angel said to her, Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you shall bring forth a son and call his name Jesus. He shall be great and be called the Son of the Highest. The Lord God shall give him the throne of his father, David. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me according to your word. 
And the angel departed from her. It came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, and all went to be taxed, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, to be taxed with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was soon expecting a child. And so it was that while they were there, she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. She laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn.
There were in the same area shepherds tending their flocks. The angel of the Lord came to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. They were quite afraid, but the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of all the hosts of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to all people. as the angels left them and returned to heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing which has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They traveled with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. When they had seen for themselves, they spread the news quickly. All who heard what they had to tell were amazed. But Mary kept these things and pondered them in her heart.
Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard those things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. He gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together and demanded to know where Christ was born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, as was written of old by the prophet. Then Herod called the wise men and sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him. The wise men departed, and the star they saw in the east went before them and stood over where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding gladness. And when they came to the place, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They fell down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures, presenting him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. After being warned by God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, the wise men departed for their own country by another way.
season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Nurturing God, you give us life and care for every need. Use the gifts you've given us and through us, the ministries of the church for your service. Bring your word through us to all who seek your transforming grace that more may come to know Jesus as Savior and be saved to move from death to life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Righteous God, you bring down the mighty and lift up the lowly. That's what, you're, that's what Mary sang. Strengthen those who seek justice. Bless those who work in, as community organizers organizers and activists and journalists and all who call attention to the imbalance of power. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you proclaim your love and mercy. Show your loving kindness to teen parents, those who are now pregnant. Comfort any who are struggling with infertility and those who await test results those who are in treatment or in hospice care and others in need. We pray especially today for Warreen Smith, Pat and Tom, John Andersons, Keith Armstrong, Kathy, Mary and Jim Oppel, Heidi and Lily Bowman, Vivian Bowman, Saeed, Charlie, Mary English, Carl Kuspert, Brandon, Brandon Lizjack, Bill and John Mahoney, Terry Maxwell, John Prosek, Evelyn Skiles, Karen Smith, Kirsten Smith, Nicholas Tan, Rebecca Boley, Jenny Waddell, and Dave Whitman, and all those who've been affected by the recent tornadoes and all the others that we name in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, fill the hungry with good things. Bless the feeding ministries of this congregation and those in our community, we expect, pray especially for Gehanna residents in need and Lutheran social services that we are so often in partnership with. Guide us as we share your bounty with those who hunger and live in poverty. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Faithful God, you stir up the hearts of those who love you. We give you thanks for those who, like Mary, were courageous in their witness. We pray especially for those who have lost loved ones in recent days. Comfort them with the hope of the, of the resurrection. We pray for the family and friends of John Funkhauser, Gordy Herbst, Jerry Ruby, and Tom Wells. Give us such courage until that day when you fulfill all things. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of new life, you come among us in places that we least expect. Receive these prayers and those in our hearts in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. May be seated. We welcome all of you. The mic is muted. Well, it doesn't say that right here. That's, I'm two for two on that today, so there might be some gooters in gremlins in the system. Welcome, you that are with us here in the sanctuary to enjoy this beautiful cantata. And those of you who are online, a look around this poll at you. Uh, it's good to have you with us on the live stream. I'd ask you to reach in your bulletin and pull out that connection card and complete that. And make also be aware that on the back of the connection card are ways for you to participate more fully in our ministry. Consider those and put those connection cards in the offering plate as you leave. And for those of you online, there's a link in the chat. Also, you can look at the menu 
wherever that is on your screen, and there's a, a link to the card and the ways to participate there. This is one of the many reasons I so love this church and the church in general, that on special times like this in special seasons, we come together and we work hard and we pull together something that probably a few weeks ago, you're like, are we going to be able to do this or not? And we've come together and provided beautiful music and thoughts and readings to remember what an incredible thing it was that Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God, was born into the world to be our Savior. So I, it's part of why I love the church. We come together to do these kinds of things that we could never do by ourselves. So I want to thank Jenny's leadership and all the people here that have done this. It has helped get us ready for Christmas, right? Amen. So let's all gather this Wednesday at 6 p.m. here at the church outside for the lighting of the big tree out there and caroling and a little bit of a service and some hot chocolate that's going to be provided free by the Columbus Coffee Company's big red food truck. And they're also, yeah, you're happy about that, aren't you? You're going to come? Yes. And if, if you, uh, there are, the truck will be here also. Is this still on? Oh, you turned it down. The truck will be here for all of you that want to get that bougie coffee instead. You know, that'll be here as well. And uh, invite people, your friends, coworkers, neighbors to that. Christmas Eve is this coming Friday. We have four services. The first is at 4 o'clock, and it's, that's the time we usually have it, but it's a little different this year. This service will feature Christmas carols, an interactive telling of the Christmas story that's going to be especially geared for children. There will be a brief reflection that Pastor Mike and I will actually ad-lib in the moment. A silent night and candlelight singing. The service will be a little shorter than normal, and there will be no communion. But it's a wonderful service for families with children. And then our traditional Christmas Eve candlelight service with Holy Communion will be at 6, 8, and 10 here in the traditional sanctuary. The 4 o'clock service will be in the fellowship hall. Uh, there's that, the 4 and 6 o'clock service will be live streamed and then on demand later. Child care will be available at 4, 6, and 8. Uh, you can help make Th these services special and help in this big undertaking just like you've come together here come together and help volunteer uh, to Tuesday at 10 a.m. we are setting up for all that if you can show up for that it'd be great we need ushers still at 4 and 8 greeters people to serve communion read scripture and provide Christmas cookies <laughs> you can sign up in the back of your connection card or online through the email newsletter we also want to encourage you to spread what's happening through uh, word of mouth, but we've also given you a couple tools here. One is a yard sign. This is not a political yard sign. <laughs> and yet, what happened in, at Christmas changed culture, changed the world in many ways. But Take one of these, they're free. We want to get, we got just a few left. Let's get them all out in yards. Um, if you already have one in yards, take another one and put it in someone else's yard, you know. <laughs> and then we also have these cards uh, that have all the information for this week, including Wednesday and Friday. We passed these out last week. There's more back there. Please take them and Use that as an invitation to others. We, we really see Christmas this year, since we weren't able to do that last year. This is a time of coming together, so let's do that. If you ordered those uh, cause cookies to support Freedom a la carte, you can pick them up today. And for just two minutes a, a day, you can be in God's Word and be shaped by God's Word using the daily text that... Christians in the West have used for centuries, and here at St. Luke, we've been using for a number of years. 
I have to tell you, it is not uncommon in my household for my wife, Kate, or I to say, hey, did you read the daily text today? It really is meaningful for today. It's a pretty common experience. And what's so cool about this is not only are you in God's word, and it just takes a couple minutes, it's two Bible verses and a meaningful prayer each day, but then you know that your brothers and sisters in Christ are reading the same words and being shaped by the same words. We subsidize the purchase of these. You can't get them cheaper anywhere else. They're only $5, and there are seven copies left. So if you're going to get them, you better get them today. And also we want to invite you to pick up your 22, uh, 2022 offering envelopes. Those are announcements for today. I'm not supposed to do anything else, right? I just sit down. Okay, good. When the angels on that first Christmas night filled the vaulted skies with their glorious song, heaven and earth were bridged forever. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus, the fulfillment of the prophet who proclaimed, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the world together shall see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Love came down, and God's glory shone around. 